Hello dear friends and welcome back to Raving with Rua here on my YouTube channel Songs from the Rua Room dedicated to singer-songwriters from Belgium and beyond. Great to see you all again. It is uh, Wednesday the 8th of April and uh, the day in which we say goodbye to one of the world's finest songwriters, indeed Mr John Prine, may he rest in peace. So we'll dedicate tonight's programme to his memory and his great songs. Um, it's very nice to see you here. If you're if you're watching live on YouTube, please uh, consider hitting that subscribe button there for me so I can get the songs out there and uh, share the music of the great people I get to talk to here on the show. My virtual tip jar is always open there in the links below. If you'd like to support the show with a few shackles, throw it in there. Always greatly appreciated. Uh, never expected, always appreciated. Tonight's show... As always, brought to you by the lovely people of G-Sharp Guitars there, um, the world's finest travel electric guitars, gsharpguitars.com. Check them out if you're in the market for uh, uh, a wonderful uh, travel electric guitar. The Room.com will, will send you to all the videos on the channel. This uh, live stream thing, this Raving with Rua thing I do here is only a small part of it. There are over 150 songwriters there that you can check out who's... Uh, who have videos and songs up on the on the main channel and uh, this is a great bit of fun i get to talk to singer songwriters from around the world uh, men and women of of the road that i've met or i have yet to meet and um tonight is no exception uh, this man is a i would call him a uh, he's a national treasure when it comes to irish songwriters uh, a lot of us grow up let grew up listening to his songs covered by many many great artists and uh, he's, a, he's an inspirational man and, and, I'm, and I'm proud to call him a friend as well in, in real life and um, his name is Kieran Halpin so without further ado folks let's go over and talk to the man himself please welcome to the show Kieran Halpin there he is evening sir <laughs> good evening <laughs> how are you doing uh, I'm doing uh, uh, very well. I'm uh, leading a, a, a cloistered life, as yeah. many people are. Uh, but it's it's uh, it's fine. I'm 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 an avid reader, that, which is, is. Uh, very useful these days, you know. But I'm uh, you know I'm living in the south of Germany, and um, it's very quiet here. Um, as I'm, well, it's a little bit less quiet where you are i noticed but yeah. uh, no it's very nice here and I'm, I'm i'm very content and i'm very happy here um but like all music i've got the whitest diary i've ever looked at in my life mm, i mean you know yeah, if you wanted to course. talk about when is my next gig well my next gig is in my next life if there is one you know. <laughs> yeah, I know. but that's where we are we, we, this is where we are yeah of course um i want to put your website up there as well kieranhalpin.com where of course everybody as you said earlier is in the same boat if anybody would like to buy a Kieran Halpin CD now would be a very good time folks kieranhalpin.com uh, is Kieran's website and uh, you know as we say all donations greatly received so Kieran also has a PayPal link folks um, which will be in the description below as well kieran at kieranhalpin.com because as you say we're all in the same boat and uh, we all need the help of our supporters and and our team but um, and you and you have a great team. You've been on the road a long time, sir. And um, would you would you care to, to to say how long, or do you remember how long? <laughs> uh, I'll say it. <laughs> well, yeah. uh, no, no, it's no problem to me for God's sake. Um, oh, I've been on the road. I do believe uh, forty-seven years. Forty-seven years. Yeah, so that'll make me about twenty-five now. It would plus VAT, yeah. I know Indeed, I mean. yeah. Yeah, well, that's it. Well, you see, and, and I was just saying earlier on that I mean, so many, so many people around the world, especially in Ireland, have have, have recorded your songs. So I, I I knew, not that I'm much younger than you, a little bit, but uh, I knew a, a lot of your songs. I've heard, you know, I'm talking about. I'm going to play "Sister and Brother" in a moment, which I, of course, heard the, the brilliant Dolores Kane singing that would have been my probably my first introduction to to um one of your songs uh, who else i'm going to make a name drop now but would you have a a couple of other names for for the listeners that people may have uh, that, that would have recorded your songs um well another very fine um irish female singer uh is 
is Geraldine McGowan, who's yeah. done a lot of work here out in Germany. Um, uh, she lives back in Doolin now with her husband, Shay. Uh, and um, in th there are many, perhaps not as well known people, um, but uh, sister and brother was um, recorded by a very fine Oh, no, that's somebody else. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, I've been, I've been very fortunate. I've had a lot of people recording my songs. Yeah. Um, I, many of them I actually can't recall yeah, sure. off the top of my head at the moment. You know? And would you say you've had a, I mean, from the point you were in the industry when there was a very strong industry, when songwriters could actually sort of make money and, and, and royalties from songs and having them released, um, could I be so bold as yeah. to ask, did that have ever happen to you? Did you make any kind of substantial earnings from songwriting? You know, if you don't mind um, asking, was, was there a I, time when that happened? No, I don't mind. I don't mind you asking at all. No, I um, uh, from my own album sales, which were never um, astronomical, uh, there were always royalties, uh, which some, you know, you got a check about every, what, three, four times a year, I think. And uh, some of them were very good. Some of them were surprisingly good, and some of them were, well, it could pay for a pint tonight. That'd be <laughs> it. But um, uh, no, um, I I had one song covered by a singer in Holland called Il Ilse de Lange. I'm sure you living in Belgium oh, will know her name. Yes, indeed. And she did a song of mine called um, "All the Answers," which, to be quite honest with you, I didn't rate very highly when I wrote it. Um, I'm glad I didn't throw it away, which yeah. was my first instinct, um, because she paid for half a house in Scotland, which is, Amazing. you know, um, pretty good. I mean, I couldn't believe it when the wow. checks were coming in and and still the royalty checks come in and, you know, they're always itemized, you know, why you get yeah. that and why you get that. And Indeed. Ilse de Lange is, of course, still touring, is a very wonderful and lovely woman. And, and uh, I've met her once. And uh, I still get money from Ilse Lange uh, performing mm. uh, that that particular song. Beautiful song it is too. Um, and, and as you said, yeah, Ilse is a, one of the top performers um, in the world now at this stage. Uh, yeah. Dutch, Dutch lady. And uh, yeah, well, just thanks for sharing that because it's just, a, you know, it's it's a great, it's a great kind of eye opener because of course the business has all changed now. And, and there's, very, yeah. there's a lot less mailbox money as we call it nowadays. And um I suppose you know no matter how established uh, a songwriter is like yourself it, it you do feel that you know and it, it happens to everybody around the world now uh with, yeah. with streaming with all that going on much more difficult to make any kind of mailbox money but luckily well up to this point anyway we've had the live gig to fall back on and hopefully that that remains and stays with that people still want to go and have the live experience or do you find that has changed as well, or do you I, feel, still find that's a very strong part of what we do? No, no, I, 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 um, from my own experience, I mean, I lived, I'm living out here now about seven years, and um, before that I lived for 21 years in Scotland, and the UK scene, when I first arrived over there, which was about 1994, mm -hmm. um, was a, a, um, mm -hmm. was a very healthy scene. A really healthy scene and um uh it was very good I, I always worked out here a lot in germany uh which has consistently remained a a strong country for live gigs people are very interested in just going out i mean to, to different venues and and different kinds of events yes. um whereas in the uk i kind of timed it accidentally right very few things in my life have ever worked out like that but um uh, the uk and i hate saying it but the uk folk club scene is in a serious dip at the moment and uh because the clubs have gone a long time the organizers are getting old um and tired and there aren't younger people sitting behind them who want to come in and take over um yeah so uh the other thing i'm afraid of is after we uh, hopefully come out of this situation we're all in at the moment is I have a feeling that a lot of smaller clubs just won't reopen which will be a kick for a lot of us you know it's very true yes they're going to struggle so, to, yeah. to reopen yeah um, they are the, the bigger clubs I think will 
will start off again because they've been making money. But the smaller clubs that have just been trickling by, um, I think a fair amount of those may not open again. And I think that's very sad because uh, live arts, live performance, not just music, but all of it, I, I believe, is very important. Um, the whole live arts experience, I think, is is really something special. And uh, it would be nice if people were able to get back into that routine again and, and keep going can. and keep supporting all will. kinds of life. Yes, because that's where it's yeah. at. We, we, I, think, I think people still pe people still need that um, outlet. Indeed, they do. But I want to say just uh, say a hello to a couple of people who are tuned in. Uh, Hizella is there in Belgium. Hi, Hizella. Nice. Thank you for tuning in. Um, our dear friend Hanneke Janison is up there in the Netherlands. You played her house a few times. Oh, I yeah. Think, and I have too. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Hi, nice Hanneke. Uh, nice to see you, Hanneke. Thanks for tuning in. Anna is over in Ireland and as is my brother Tony. How's it going, folks? Great to see you all. Thank you for tuning in here. Uh, my dad, also a big fan of yours, Martin Dunnigan, is there from Shannon Bridge. How you do, <laughs> Dad? He's a he's more a fan of you than he is me, Alan. Just joking. Um, <laughs> uh, another another man you may have met along the road is Eugene Brosnan. Uh, I did a yeah. stream with Eugene recently. Hi, Eugene. Great to see you, sir. The Bros yeah, indeed. County County Cork. Yeah. Great to see you, Eugene. Great musician. Um, yeah, he is indeed and songwriter. And we have a lovely, we did a lovely live stream here as well. Luke is over from uh, Belgium as well. Thanks for tuning in, Luke. Great to see you all here, Anna Heen. Uh, played in Staden at Cathy's Art Gallery, yes, a couple of years ago. He did a lovely gig at the Art Gallery in Staden, Kieran. I don't know if you remember that one, but uh, that was at Cathy's place, yeah, I do. Uh, little, yeah, uh, and again, was yeah, there. I'm supposed to be doing it again in, I'm supposed to be doing it again in June, but well, who knows? Who knows, indeed. Fingers crossed that's all going to happen. Nessa yeah. Brosnan, Eugene's sister in law, is that right, Nessa? I think, if I remember correctly, from the could be his wife. Whoops. <laughs> Nessa, thanks for tuning in. And Chris Link is in Germany. And Monica Nordley says, watching on the TV screen now. Nice to listen. And it's good to see you. Um, keep so inspired by soldier on inspired by music. Thank you. Hope to see you in Norway when this madness is over. Monica Nordley and her husband Steiner Robinson recorded Sister and Brother in Norwegian. Um, oh, right. I heard about yes. that. Yeah, and uh, so it's great to see you. Well, thanks for doing that. Lovely for thank you for tuning in. Uh, Christoph is there from Austria as well. Thank you for tuning in, Christoph. Hi, Chris. Um, lovely to see you. And Chris, another Chris, Chris Link from Germany. But look, I'm going to go and play this song called "Sister and Brother." This is a, one of my. Uh, you have so many great songs, but this is certainly one of my favorite songs of yours, and I think one of the songs that that kind of drew me into your music, thanks to Dolores Kane. But I'm going to give it a blast. Let's, let's hear this, folks. It's a great song from Kieran Halpin called Sister and Brother, and dedicated to Monica and Steiner over there in, in Oslo tonight. From the cold heart lessons of love 
no head, no breather, no hurt, no bleeding, no heart, no feeling, no faith, no healing. If you need a lover, please look no far. Like sister and brother My head full of dreaming for no rhyme and no reason. I fell for not eating the warning and the lesson of love. No head, no grieving, no hurt, no bleeding. No. Like sister and brother, we need each other. Like sister and brother, we need each other. Like sister and brother. Kieran, that's just a that's just a stunner. I've always loved that song so much. Do you um rem remember writing that song and when when was it born? Try that again. Um, mute you. Sorry, I I, I muted. I, my... yeah, you got the question. <laughs> yeah, I did. Um, it was in the eighties, and I was living in Dublin. Um, I cannot recall when i actually wrote it but it was probably sometime in the middle middle to late 80s maybe 86 87 something like that but i can't actually remember sitting down and doing it and um, i uh, i do know i wrote it very quickly because okay. with, with the chord progression it's just the same three or four chords just round and round with a different yeah. melody um put on top and it, it, it kind of wrote itself as as many of the better songs seem to what's your yeah. what's your songwriting process do you do you always have to have the guitar with you do you take a lot of notes first and then sit down or how does it go and um, it's it's changed it's changed completely over the years i used to um i i used to always have the guitar first mm. and come up with uh, the melody or a portion of the melody first and then start putting words to it but in the last from seven uh, yeah maybe seven years eight years and um, I've, I've been writing a lot of lyrics um, and I don't know if you well I don't know if you drive but I drive a lot and um, I, I find myself when I'm driving uh, coming up with a lot of lyrics and I've just got a little kind of dictaphone and I just switch it on my knee and just say whatever it is I have come up with and then um, that's been the way I've been writing songs. I mean, the last two albums I've done, they were all written uh, tech, lyric first, text first, and then mm. the music put afterwards. So it's it's completely done uh, an about face. So yeah, so it really is. It has, it has changed, as you said, and yeah. completely around. Yeah, uh, it was always and 
was it always guitar, acoustic guitar, or was it a bit of piano? Are you a mainly guitarist? <laughs> Some mm -hmm. people would tell you I'm not even a guitarist. I uh, know. Um, but uh, no, it, it's it, no, it's always always been it, it's always been guitar. Okay, and speaking of guitars, that amazing guitar you play on stage, I know you think you have two of them. Tell us a little bit about those for the guitar geeks among us. It's a hand-built machine. It's beautiful. <laughs> Yeah, from um, Coventry in England, um, uh, a wonderful man and a lovely man, as many of these luthiers are, um, called Rob Armstrong. And he's one man in his garden shed. There's no factory involved. It's just him. Um, mm. If you order a guitar, uh, you will. And he makes wonderful uh, mandolas, really very wonderful mandolas. Um, if you order a guitar from him, um, you'll have it in two months' time. Wow. Uh, and uh, what's slightly different about these guitars, and I know nothing about the building of a guitar, but what is slightly different is that they are they're, they're called long scale, so they're one fret longer. Oh. But but the one fret longer at the, the other end of the guitar, the guitar, the end of the guitar that's further away from you. And some people talk about extra frets. They're talking about up here, up the top end. Yes, yes. yes. But uh, no, it's 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 a fret uh, longer away from you which means it's a slightly uh, bigger stretch to make okay. say for example c or some chords and um, i quickly adjusted that it was no problem and the one thing i found about them or maybe i just became a slightly better guitar player is that since i've got those guitars i've been breaking very very few strings whereas before that people were beginning to talk about me and um, they were more impressed with the string changing, which I, apparently I can do in a minute and a half, wow. uh, done, uh, done, done the songs. So it's nice yeah. to think that people have to concentrate now on the songs. That's fantastic. Yeah, this is the amazing guitars. I've, I've, I've heard them and, and played them, of course, myself. Uh, yeah. Lucky enough to, to have a go on your guitars, and but they are they are beautiful. I know you got one. One was in an accident. Uh, not too, last yeah. year was it? Two years uh, ago. No, no, about still oh about three. Four, was it? Over four years ago now. Okay. Yeah. And it was destroyed. And did you get it fixed well, up? Or? It wasn't completely destroyed, but it did take a lot of work to get it right. Ah, uh, see. Yeah, but uh, yeah, yeah, it, um, it's 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 fine again. It's okay. Ah, cool. Happy to hear that. Peter Abbott is on there. Hello, Kieran, having a glass of wine in All the right. garden, enjoying the show. Thanks <laughs> for tuning in, Pete. Pete Abbott is there. Eugene uh, hit the nail on the head there again. He said, song song of our times, if ever there was one. Absolutely, Eugene Brosnan. Um, beautiful song. Um, absolutely one of my favourites. And Kirsten Eckstein, is that correct? Yeah. Yes. Great to see you live and kicking. Uh, Eckstein will still be here after Corona. Stay safe. Yeah. Epping, he's, uh, Eppingen, he's... that's, a, that's a, a gig you do, is it, in Eppingen? Yeah, he's a he's a, a a wonderful man, and he, he just runs a series of private gigs, um, and it's really well organised. And um, yeah, he's a, he's a really nice man, and, and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him again. Hopefully, when this when this pass over. this passes over or whatever it's going to do. Yeah, I really hope so. I want to say I want tell me a little bit about uh, you made a couple of home recordings, especially for the program tonight. Just you and your guitar, beautiful, pure, simple. Uh, on the yeah. phone recordings, which which I love, which a lot of musicians are doing these days, of course. Um, but the song, uh, one of the songs I want I want to play from it uh, is called Ben Parkinson's Friends, I believe. Yes, it Just, is. Give us a little bit of background behind that, please, because it's, a, it's a great um, I was living in Scotland at the time, and um, uh, this was eight years ago, and the um, Olympic Games were being held in the UK. And uh, you may and may not know, but uh, they sent the um, the Olympic flame all around the UK and Northern Ireland. And um, I thought it was a very inclusive gesture. And then about a week later, I was watching the news, six o'clock news, and uh, the, the flame had made it to Doncaster. And it was being carried down the street by a, a British soldier uh, called Ben Parkinson, who... Um, uh, he was sent back from Afghanistan, uh, two mm. legs gone, one arm gone, some of his head gone. Jeez. 
they actually sent him back to die. He did not die. He is alive to this day. And it just got me thinking about the politicians and the head honchos who send all these young people, um, men and women, to go out and fight these wars and these places. And I'm not wise enough to know why they've been sent out to these places. But I do know that these young men and women go out there and do their jobs very bravely. Some um, come back very badly scarred. Some come yeah. back not at all. Um, and I, I just thought maybe somebody should write a song about uh, the actual soldiers, not Tony Blair and George Bush, Perfect. who were the first two people to be mentioned in this song uh -huh. on the first line. Yeah. But um, I, and you know, I'm 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 no fan of the British Army. In fact, I'm no fan of any army. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm an idealistic idiot who wonders why there are any wars in the world, but apparently that's just what we need every now and again. Uh, so be it. Um, but I, I, I'm, I write this for the ordinary soldiers, no matter from what army, but the young men and women who do what they are told to do. Amazing. Well, let's have a listen to it, folks. The brilliant Kieran Halpin and a wonderful song. Ben Parkinson's Friends. Here we go. I think we had no sound on that, folks. Is that right? The people in the chat are saying there's no volume, but okay, we'll fix that. All going to plan. But anyway, we're going to, we're going to ask you again about um, growing up, where you did, and what were your musical influences at, at the time. Uh, but was it was there a lot of was there a lot of music in your family? Was there a lot of, you know, influences as as regards uh, the, the musicians or music or singers? Um, in in my own immediate family and even cousins and relatives no there was um no there was no other musicians at all and um, i was uh the youngest of four boys i've got a younger sister and um, and uh i was brought up um listening to people like uh bob dylan and the beatles of course mm -hmm. and the and the great british bands from from the mid 60s early to mid 60s late 60s um, and the kinks of course and uh, I, I I was just I was a little bit young, young for this kind of music in a way but I, I absolutely absorbed it completely and then uh, it was the area of Ireland I'm from the traditional music scene um, at that stage was not strong so I didn't really hear any traditional music until I went to Dublin when I was 18 um, and uh, I'd been in abandoned school from when I was 15 and um, we were kind of playing hmm. rock music and a bit of blues and stuff. Um, but I was writing songs from 14 and they were all very acoustic based. So by the time I left home at 18, which uh, something less than my parents' best wishes, um, they wanted me to be a teacher because... Uh, teaching runs in my family like a plague so I um anyway I I headed off with my guitar and um I I I learned a lot immediately when I arrived in Dublin the acoustic music scene was very strong yeah um, I imagine yeah and I learned a huge amount and I learned about traditional music and I learned how to back the tunes and sing a lot of the songs and I think a cross between all of those things the lyric writing of people like Bob Dylan and, of course, the now sorely missed uh, John Prine. Um, uh, that combined with uh, the traditional music I was hearing and learning in 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 Dublin mainly. Um, plus, believe it or not, I mean, I was in a choir in school and I, I did like singing. Now, I certainly don't sound like a choir boy anymore, if I ever did, but I... I you know, I was brought up with the Latin mass and I loved those hymns. And there's something about the melodies, which I perhaps they found their way a little bit in. But it was kind of a, a mixed soup of all of those things. And then by the time I was about, yeah, by the time I was about 20, the songs I was writing were very much sounding like me and not sounding like anybody else. Amazing. Who else was on the on the Dublin scene at that time? Well, there's some great names flying around. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I know Tom um, Pacheco was uh, one of those yeah. names. Anyway, he's he's back in Woodstock, in New York, and yeah, Tom, uh, Tom and I were on the same record label, which was Round Tower, oh, yeah. uh, which specialised in songwriters, 
and they had Mick Hanley as well. So Mick was around. And at that stage, um, Christy Moore was beginning to make serious waves. He'd just come back from England. And I think round about that whole time, he did his first album, um, which was a Christy Moore album. But on the album was was the essence of, of the very uh, soon to be formed Planksty. Um, Paul Brady had just come back from the States. Wow. Um, Andy Irvine was, of course, there. And there were two acoustic um, and they were called dry folk clubs, which started about half 11 at night. Dry folk the coffee clubs. kitchel and the, <laughs> and the universal. Well, they were supposed to be dry as in uh, no alcohol. Um, I, um, of course, I myself never indulged, but I can tell you it was the odd little uh, bottle being um, sneaked in here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, guitar cases didn't always just contain guitars. <laughs> shall we say lovely yeah and you know i mean I, I i was mixing with a lot of people who were not obviously well known as christy moore and paul brady etc but um i i got to know very well a, a songwriter um who sadly has passed on called uh, mick fitzgerald and he and i had a very kind of healthy um uh, relationship as in he would write a song one week and I would go, Jesus, Mick, you know, that's a fantastic song. Yeah. So I would be driven to go back to my apartment or my flat as it was and write a song and go down and play it next week. And he would say, that's a great song, Kieran. And it just kind of went like that all the time. Amazing, yes. and, um, and there was no bad feeling. There was no jealousy. There was nothing like that about it. It, it without speaking about it, it was all about us all, all learning. And uh, it, it, it was a great time to be there and oh, I was I one of the I was one of the few who didn't stay in Dublin. I um when I was uh twenty I went to England and hitchhiked around the whole country and picked up gigs and folk clubs here and folk clubs there. I organized a tour for nine months later. Then I went to Holland, did the same, then I went into Germany, did the same, went home, did some gigs. Yeah. And from that big uh, a circuit developed and I got to know more people. In different countries and everybody you met people just good people interesting people or musicians you you learned you learned from everybody and it you know it was great what a, what it, a it, it, time it, to be it, there yeah yeah it, it helped to develop the personality i'm not saying there's any less of that about now i'm just um well i'm too old to learn new ways now so uh, what what you see is what you get at this stage you know I'm going to try and play this song again, uh, Ben Parkinson's Friends. Which album is it on of yours, Kieran? Uh, it's on an album called It's Always 315, which is the second last second to last album I've made. Um, and it was an acoustic album, just me and the guitar. And I did it in Austria uh, in a day, actually, working with this um, uh, engineer I, I know well. And it was um, it was a great pleasure to be there. Uh, so I'd like to say hello to Franz. I have no idea if he's looking, but uh, we had a great two days doing the album. So there you go. Ben Parkinson's yeah, friends. Yeah, absolutely. We'll give, it a, we'll give it a blast again, folks. Uh, from Kieran's um, album, it's always 3.15. KieranHoppin.com will get you the albums. Let's see if this works now. Great song. <laughs> Tony, 
Why was it George? Why was it Afghanistan? This war will be lost by our leaders, we know, but won by Ben Parkinson's friend. The empires of Russia and Britain before, defeated by guns and by knives, and all the technology we bring today cannot save any innocent life. All the young men and young women who march, they speak with a deep southern drawl. The Geordie, the Brummy, the Midwestern twang, all stood up and answered your call. Why was it Tony? Why was it George? Why was it Afghanistan? This war will be lost. By our leaders we know, but one by Ben Parkinson's friend. When all the choppers depart from Kabul, and the flags have been gathered and furled, when the Taliban are once more regain the high ground, will we live in a much safer world? The Taliban take all the cities and towns Will we live in a much safer world? When all their women are scuffled and bound Will we live in a much safer world? Ben Parkinson's friends, yes, a beautiful, great song. I love... That's one of the one of the things I think you do so well. Uh, write sort of politically driven or or songs of social conscious like that. I just I think I think they're great. You have so many great ones, apart from all your other songs. But it, I've always been drawn to to social songs like that, to anti war songs, and you know you you, you it wouldn't even be fifty percent of your of your repertoire really. But every so often no. I think you're you're hit between the eyes by something, and you sit you sit down and you write. If I'm not well, I, 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 I kind of, I kind of had to write it because um, the last few years, probably the last ten albums, I, I tend to record an album, and then I, I won't even try and write a song for two years, and then I will kind of think, well, you maybe you should think about another one, mm -hmm. and then I, I would write, I would write the songs, um, actually very quickly, in probably a month or five or six weeks, um, and that would be the album, but. Uh, when the Olympic Games happened and Ben Parkinson carried that flame down that street, that was uh, all of eight years ago and that last album came out about four or five years ago. Mm. Um, and I just I just had the writers. Um, I, you know, I, I think there are a lot of things to protest about these days. And I think, I think a lot of singer-songwriters should do at least a bit of it and not be afraid to perhaps say the wrong thing now and again, it's That's your opinion. A good point, yeah. You know, and then um, I, I mean, I've had people saying to me, you know, there aren't enough people writing protest songs, and I think they are protest. You know, people think protest songs. Well, that was in the sixties. Well, I think yeah. that's wrong. There are more things to write about today than there were perhaps in the sixties. Yes. I would agree with that. Absolutely right. And uh, we, we're in a, we're in a prime position as artists, I think, to do that as songwriters yeah. to get up there without getting too soapboxy about it, but to get up there and go, I feel strongly about this. And if yeah. it can if it, if it can affect somebody or change their mind or just give them a a little twist on their own perspective, then I think I think it's brilliant to do. Um Keith Melville, do you know that do you know Keith Kieran in Berlin? Sure. Uh, yeah, he says great to see him here well. on video. Sorry missed it these past couple of years. My fault entirely. Hope our paths cross again very soon. Thank you very much, Keith, for tuning in and for that lovely message. You have he's fans a, all over the world. He's a great, he's a great man. Great man. Thank you, Keith. And I don't know who this one is, uh, but again, another lovely message. And thank you for tuning in, whoever you are. Um, NF, NF Tom Tom. Thank you uh, for having the special character. He's he's great. Best Thomas. Thank you, Thomas, for tuning in. Um, there was a comment back here from uh, my friend. Chris, which will lead us to our next song. I remember Kieran teaming up with Chris Jones, who passed away too young. 
and uh, and I got a favorite a tune from Kieran, which is called "Letter to America." Yes, another brilliant uh, song. I love "Letter to America" as well. But tell me a little bit about Chris Jones and your your, your work with with the brilliant Chris Jones, please. Um, I probably met Chris first in the uh, yeah maybe the late eighties, and he was playing with a friend of mine, a, a wonderful singer songwriter from Leeds in Yorkshire, called um, John Strong. And John and I have known each other for years and have remained constant friends. And um, uh, and I, I, you know, you couldn't help. I mean, Chris was very young at that stage, but you couldn't help be blown away by what he was doing. Um, and then about, I think about ninety three, ninety four, um, when I'd moved to Scotland, I was touring a lot out here. I'd come out for about a two month period, and I I started meeting Chris and. We'd sit down and play together and then we ended up doing a tour together and then i'd go back to scotland and um and it just grew from that and you know we probably i think he played on six of my albums always brilliantly um and uh, we became a very powerful duo simply because we had two very um clearly defined roles in our mm. duo i wrote the songs i sang the songs um, I've been told by many musicians I'm a very fine rhythm guitar player. Um, and what they mean by that is you start going one, two, three, four, and four minutes later, you're going one, two, three, four, because a lot of people speed up. Um, but uh, And then Chris was just this great guitar player, and I have never professed or wanted to be a great guitar player. And, you know, I would, my signal to Chris when to do a solo was I just step back in the microphone, one step, and that's him. And when I'd want him to stop, I'd he step was. forward. And that was the and single, he, the, yeah. And and he, he had to be watching because um, if, if I was displeased, I was not shy about saying it afterwards. <laughs> and Chris, um, I think, you you know. But he was great to work with because he yeah. would he would take that on board. Sure. Um, How did you actually take that and it could, could adjust yeah. to what you were and saying we, and we, what you needed? We, yeah. we ended up finding a great way to work together. Um and and uh, i i was grateful i admired him a lot for that and um, he was not always the easiest man in the world and um, i am not always the easiest man in the world so it just uh it worked and you know we would play together for two months yeah disappear he'd be doing stuff with other people uh, the great steve baker harmonica player uh with Geraldine mcgowan with many many other people solo tours also um and then we'd hook up six months later for another two months and it was a great way to work together. He had a great sound. I mean, I've never seen you live, but this is a little live show. Uh, the Acoustic Tea Room. It's taken from the Acoustic Tea Room, apparently. I don't know where that is. Do you remember where that is? Yeah, it's in, room. Uh, it's in a little village in um, uh, uh, Cumbria called Kirby Stevens. And uh, they, they used to sell antiques uh, during the day and have a little um, coffee shop there and then they'd once a week i think it was once a week at, at the height they uh would clear everything out and make it into a venue with chairs and stuff and uh the lady there penny would cook uh, two meals one vegetarian one meat and there would be a very fine meal and then there'd be music and it was packed every night oh. of the every night they had music it was simply full and uh it, it was great to play there beautiful uh when you have clubs like that at your at your disposal what 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 a what a lovely thing this is a great looks like a great gig great energy in this this is kieran halpin folks and chris jones from the acoustic cure room and i'm not sure what the song is called there's, there's a load of songs from this gig uh but i think this is just a game without you is that right let's have a listen we'll know soon enough
walk a mile without you, I wear a smile without you, I harmonize without you, I fantasize without you, it's not the same without you, it's just a game without you, without you. I cannot rhyme without you, no sense of time without you, life is a crime without you, I only mime without you, it's not the same without you, it's just a game without you, without you, without you here beside me, there's no one else to guide me, the strongest urge inside me, leaves me fumbling blindly, it's not the same without you, it's just a game without you without you without you without you I lose all fight without you no left or right without you there is no light without you no black or white without you it's not the same without you it's just a game without you without you on my knees without you I can't be pleased without you I cross the seas without you Play birds and bees without you It's not the same without you It's just a game without you Without you Without you here beside me There's no one else to guide me The strongest urge inside me Leaves me fond and blind me It's not the same without you It's just a game without you Without you, without you, without you. Beside me, there's no one else to guide me. The strongest urge inside me leaves me fumbling blindly. It's not the same without you, it's just a game without you. Without you, without you, without you. Without you here beside me, there's no one else to guide me. The strongest urge inside me leaves me fumbling blindly. It's not the same without you, it's just a game without you, 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 without you. Thank you. Yeah, folks, absolute masters of their craft, both of those men there. That must have been some buzz to, uh, to go out every night and, and do that to, to packed houses, wherever you were. And it, it was. It was an incredible yeah. buzz. Um, uh, because, uh, I mean, Chris, like all great musicians, he had certain parts worked out, you know, like little riffs that would, um, they would be there every night. But when it came to a solo, I had no idea where he was going. And I sometimes wondered if Chris knew where he was going, but it always worked and it was always incredible. And I always gave him plenty of room to play so that he didn't feel he had to say everything the first time round. And no, it was an amazing buzz. And I have been incredibly fortunate um, over over my whole career, if I may say, um, to have played with absolutely world-class musicians um, from my very early days in 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 ireland when i played with some very fine traditional musicians yeah um like johnny keenan um to also uh, when i was in dublin between 83 and 93 i played with the great jimmy faulkner again sadly no longer with us Indeed. and that was an incredible buzz with jimmy um similar to chris but 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 not always as as high energy but he was the most beautiful melodic guitar player his solo was just you could just sing them every night. They were beautiful, you know. Yeah. Um, and then moving on to Martin Alcock, a great bass player. Again, good God, who's left. Um, sadly, no longer with us. 
um, a genius uh, bass player mainly, but a great, you know, he used to say, I, I used to say, Martin, I'm writing your bio here. What do you play? He said, anything with strings, <laughs> you know. And uh, love, man. yeah, yeah. And he, he also, he taught himself how to play keyboards so that he could tour with Jethro Tull around the world for four years, which he did. And he knew as much piano in the beginning as I did, but he, he worked at it for months and months and he got he got the gig and he toured the world um, yeah. and then more recently i have the great pleasure of playing with manfred leuter one of the finest accordion players anywhere i've ever met but also um a, a genius in the studio and he produced my last album doll yeah. which was just one of the most pleasurable and easy thing i've ever done in my life I remember and you also that, yeah when you when you made yeah. it yeah because we met shortly yeah, after I, that and you, just, you said yeah. exactly that yeah and I, you know, I, I play with this great percussion player, Yogi Yokish, and uh, we've become firm friends, as I have with 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 uh, Manfred Leuter. So I I have been really fortunate, you know. You have, and I have a song. We we'll, we we'll have another song from the from the latest album, A Simple Life. But I want to do again do a little bit of advertising here, folks. If you just joined us, I know we're, we were well just joined us. We're nearly an hour into this. Time flies on these things. We're talking to Kieran Halpin, one of Ireland's finest songwriters. His website is down there, kieranhalpin.com. If you would like to um also to buy an album now would be a great time kieran's paypal is there folks as well you know we're all kind of stuck at, uh, with this virus that's going on you know all donations greatly received all cds uh, purchases greatly received so all of these links will be in the in in the in the links below when i edit up this please share this video as well afterwards and um, so people can can re-watch and re-listen um i want tell me about a simple life is one of the be most beautiful songs from from the album doll um, again, it was one of those songs I was driving in the car and the lyrics just came. Uh, and, you know, lyrically speaking, um, it is very simple. It's very straightforward about what it's about. Um, and um, uh, it, 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 I just wrote it very quickly. I've never been one to um, get overly fussed about Oh, no, have I heard that melodic line before? Well, yeah. the short answer to that is, yes, of course you've heard it before. In Western music, we've only got uh, 12 notes. Good point. So <laughs> how, many, how many combinations of 12 notes can you make? And it's not going to sound like anything else that was ever written yes. in the last 300 years. Um, so I, I don't get hung up about that. Um, for me, the, the thing that makes a song unique is, well, the lyric, uh, the melody to an extent and and the feeling behind it um whether it's a soft song or a, a more aggressive song or uh anarchy song or whatever it is um that's what makes it work for me and it's only in the last few days i've been doing these recordings in the living room here next door yeah and my uh, my housemate here uh birgit has been um uh, i keep calling her my cameraman but she um, <laughs> She finds a little bit overwhelming, but anyway, <laughs> I'd like to thank Birgit for helping thank me with the recordings because I never, yeah. I never really thought about. You know, I know a lot of people are doing it, but I am um, technologically uh, somewhat constrained, <laughs> as in I'm I'm pretty rubbish at this stuff. So I just like to uh, thank Birgit for helping me yeah, set that up fair, and fair uh, play to her indeed. And uh, also, I'd I'd like to uh, very quickly uh, mm -hmm. dedicate a song to a good friend in Saltbourne. Um, called uh, Joan Iverson and her family. Um, they have been uh, very welcoming to me when I've been in Saltbourne and have showed me um, the interesting sights of Saltbourne. And <laughs> I, won't go into, <laughs> I won't, go into, won't go into any more detail than that. No, we'll leave it at that. <laughs> well, I look at a couple of more comments. There's lots of, lots of live viewers and comments coming in here. The Cornish Arms. Great to see you, Kieran. Greetings from oh, yeah. and Klaus. And uh, thank you so much, the Cornish Arms, for, for tuning yeah. in. Lovely people by the They're, sounds of uh, too. Great people. I've known them for, known them from years. Oh yeah, I've known them years and years and years. Amazing. Thanks for tuning and, uh, in, guys. They've they've got this they've got this lovely pub um, up in Solingen, and uh, I played. Yeah, you know, they have gigs, and I played there oh, a few months ago, and it's just a wonderful spot, and it's it's a joy to see Klaus and Susie every time I'm there. They're, they're beautiful to have people wonderful. like that on the road when you... When oh, you God, yeah. Oh, yeah. Man. Wonderful. Um, yeah. Keith Melville said the first time I saw you was in March, 20 or 21 years ago. Oh, I was only uh, seven. 
he was only seven years old and he was he'd been in the game for about 18 years at that stage lads Aye. monica nordley and steiner are still watching in oslo norway steiner robertson says that your album mission street made his day and he gave it to all his mates to listen to and he still plays it to this day thank you steiner for that lovely comment thank you yeah mission street was was a was i think am i right in saying quite a big album for you was that on round tower or was that before? Uh, yeah it was uh it was one of three albums i did but round tower uh, hmm. yeah it was the nice. second album i did with them and it was produced by a man who's a very good friend of mine uh, called dick smith and um it's amazing how life goes full circle. I mean, we, we made the album in London and Dex is from Sunderland and he was kind uh, of commuting between Sunderland and London for his work. And then we did the album there and it was it was a complicated album to do, but we got it done and uh, I feel very proud of it as I do about, quite frankly, all the albums. Uh, and it's now transpired that Dex lives about 20 kilometers away from me now here in the oh, south wow. of Germany, yeah. Full, full circle, yeah. that's unbelievable. That's great. Yeah, he came out he, he came out here with me to do two tours as a bass player, yeah. and he met this wonderful woman from Austria called Andrea, and they got married, and three kids, three kids later, and they're still here. Amazing story, wonderful. Well, we'll do this, we'll dedicate this song maybe to him and, and all those lovely people who look after you on the road, Karen. It's yeah. called A Simple Life. There's nothing simple about the touring life, as you know, um, but this is uh, a beautiful song and it's from your album, Doll. And here he is, just in your kitchen, doing what you do. Wonderful version, A Simple Life. I just want to keep on breathing. Take one step at a time. Watch the sun rise every morning See the moon set every night I just want to make you happy Keep that smile upon your face I don't need to make a million And I don't need to run that race I just want to see my children And I don't need to compromise I just want to see them healthy Grow up strong and grow up wise I just want another morning to share your dreams and share your home. I don't need to keep on moving and I don't want to die alone. I could hide a welcome silence when the microphone is loud. I don't need to run for cover or keep on hiding in the crowd I can't help it if I lose it when I am wrong and you are right I don't need the complication I just want a simple life I could hide a welcome silence when the microphone is loud I don't need to run for cover or keep on hiding in the crowd I can't help it if I lose it when I am wrong and you are right. And I don't need the complication. I just want a simple life. Short and sweet and beautiful and to the point another gem thank you yeah it's i wouldn't say you've had the simple life you've had the, the life of a of a traveling troubadour musician hardcore for many many years and uh not that it shows or anything but uh you know you've been there done that you've been around you're, you're and i'm only saying that because you're an inspiration you've inspired me and many people like me to do doing what you do well, thank you. Um, you're welcome. Uh, it's just, uh, you know, there must be times where you kind of sometimes feel the strain or kind of go, you know, I, I know I do and, and have done being on the road kind of going, well, is this worth it? Is it, am I, am I making any kind of inroad, you know, especially when, when times are tough and you're maybe not making much money? What would you say to, 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 to musicians who are sort of in that frame of mind, who are in 
kind of on the crossroads? Um, well, my, I'm not sure I'm much good at giving advice to anybody else, but my own way of dealing with it, and it, it has happened to me sometimes. It's the sun doesn't shine every day, and um, but my own way of dealing with it is, uh, put your head down, keep at it. There will be a better day. It may not be tomorrow. It may not be the day after tomorrow, but there will come a day that's better. And but about the question of whether it's worth it or not, well, that's a completely um, individual decision that you have to make. I can't advise you and say that, well, you know, you've got you're making this amount of money that that should be all right. Mm. There is no such thing as all right. But you know, having said that, I know musicians have it sometimes. Um, a little bit difficult but you know everybody does in every job they do you know a, a lot of people in, in a nine to five job or whatever it is or people working night shifts um have incredibly stressful jobs uh all right they might make more money it might be more regular but everybody has their stresses and strains and I'm not really well versed enough to be able to hand out advice and say, "Well, that's enough for you. You're all right with that." Sure. Because sure, sure. I've I've been in that situation myself, and I've I've wondered, "Well, is it worth it?" It's mm. always been worth it for me. I think I get in at maybe an easier time. Um, I I don't know. I, I have been lucky that people have done my songs and helped to yeah. spread spread my name around. I haven't. Had, had to do that always um and the good people you meet well outweigh for by far outweigh uh the perhaps not nice people the, you meet indeed, occasionally or, or the problems that you, you know encounter. yeah but um, yeah, it, it's a, it's a complete it's a complete inward decision whether it's water or not because there are bad days there's no doubt about it um but you have to look at other people and think well jesus they're having a bad day too so you know i know for me i have kept at it um and i'm glad i did and it's not always not always been easy and i've not always handled it well and i've not always made the correct decisions that's absolutely true but i am what i am i haven't been able to change and uh, whatever is i've done right and whatever is i've done wrong that was then there is nothing i can do about it now yes so i uh but i think it's great i think it's a great testament to your strength of character you know like i said you you, you know you're, you're you're still doing gigs i mean you, you to me you should be playing i see you as a man who should be playing much much higher level as in bigger, well, bigger venues and stuff, you know. But you still, I know you still enjoy right the there. smaller stuff. Yeah, you, I, yeah, absolutely. I know you <laughs> still enjoy the smaller, intimate gigs, and you and you and you do a wonderful job at them, of course. Yeah. Of course. Um. Anybody who knows you and knows your knows your songs, we kind of feel that you should be on a higher level. But this is what I mean by it's a testament to your character for for sticking it out and staying yeah. on the on the. You know, you still have a huge following around the world. I mean, today's stream is a great testament to that. Lots of great comments coming in. All all. All through the stream, um, wonderful words from people coming in. Chris says, I got introduced to Kieran by Susie and Klaus while Kieran was playing at their pub. Thanks for that. You see, you, you affect a lot of people's lives, and I, I, I love that. I mean, and again, it's put, said it as well. You guys definitely make a positive change in our lives, and I think that's the power of music, right? Yeah. And, and wonderful to have right. all that. You know, we, we don't really do it for adulation. We, we do it to make a living, but we do it because our heart and soul is in it. And, um, yeah, and you're yeah. a prime example of that. Yeah, but I mean, it's it's nice when people come up to you at the end of a gig or whatever, or uh, they they just come up and say, you know, oh, I I love that song. Like I yeah. could completely relate to that song, and um, you know, I, I took it to mean this. Whether you actually meant that or not, and I mean, I think that's very valid when you hear a song written by somebody else and you take it to mean this, but in fact, the songwriter meant this. But it yeah. actually isn't. It's not important. It's lovely. It's you know, if 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 the person who's just listened to it takes something out of it, well, that job is done. That's it. Then, then job done. Indeed, absolutely. And are you working on? Are you working on more songs? I mean, can we expect another album from you in in the foreseeable future, or what's the plan? Um, is there a plan? 
uh, is there a plan? Jesus Christ. <laughs> I've been asked that song for you, asked, asked that question for years. What's your plan, Karen? Um, Come on, <laughs> well, I, I, I've, um, the recording I've started doing here in the last few days with Birgit's help is, um, it, it was, it was just a reaction to other people saying that, well, you know, um, maybe you could do a, a concert and broadcast it live. So, but I've, I'm actually just recording really old songs now. Oh, man, I'm visiting Sirius back catalogue um, and I'm enjoying it immensely. I mean, effectively, some days I have to sit down and relearn two songs to record, but uh, I'm enjoying doing it. Yeah. Um, to be honest with you, uh, the album Doll took a lot out of me um uh creating it um and i am immensely proud of it uh, immensely happy with the work with manny of course and um yogi um and uh, antoine puts the bass player it, it, it was such a joy to do but emotionally it it took its toll um and uh Maybe I'm getting over it. I'm certainly not. Well, there was a lot going on in your life at the time as well. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I I did go through a bad time, largely my own fault, of course. Yeah. But um, I, I maybe I'm coming out of it. Yeah. Uh, maybe I maybe I am. I I actually thought for a long, long time until maybe just a couple of weeks ago that that's it. You've done twenty one albums. Why on earth would you do another one? You made more than. Um, who was it? What did somebody tell me? You made more than Bruce Springsteen, <laughs> <laughs> or somebody like that. I don't know. Uh, really? Yeah, something like that. I can't. Well, I can't albums, imagine that's true. That's amazing. And I, I just saw a comment there which I forgot to mention. Tell people about your three wonderful songbooks. This man has three songbooks of songs, folks, which you can get through his uh, website. Yeah, I do. Uh, thank you for reminding us of that, though. Um, so oh, yes, he has three. He has three. Uh, Dow Dixter, yeah. Um, yeah, he's a friend, a friend of mine from Holland who has organised a, a couple of tours for me up there. He, he's a great man. Hi, Da, nice to hear from you. Thank you for tuning in and for reminding us of that. Um, so not only can you buy great CDs from Kieran, folks, he's got songbooks. If you like any of his songs, they're all there. So uh, that leads us into There's Life in the Old Dog Yet, which there is. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us if about you say song. so. A, I know, I know there is. I know there is. I'm going to play the song. Uh, tell us a little bit about this. It's probably self-explanatory, but it's a gorgeous song. Um, it's it's based on a, a uh, an expression that you will be familiar with yourself, uh, Dahi, uh, an expression we have in English. Um, there's life in the old dog still. And I just yes. changed. No, life in the old dog yet is what we say. Yes. And I changed yet to still because it's easier to rhyme things with still. <laughs> um, if you write songs, you'll pick up, pick up on that quickly. <laughs> and um, I... I yeah, it, it's just, it's, it's, we will all know 14 and 15 year olds who look at people of 25 and 26 and they think, oh, they're really old. Yeah. And people of 25 will look at people of 40 and think, oh my God, it must be horrible to be as old as 40. <laughs> and people of 40, this is my introduction I do now at the show every night. Yeah. People of 40 will look at people of who are over a certain age <laughs> and uh, they will think, Oh, if you get to this age, why on earth would you want to live? It must be horrible. <laughs> and I wrote this song, basically says, there's life in the old dog still. Still, there sure is. Let's have a listen. We'll finish off with this. We'll finish off with this song and then we'll come back and have a, we'll say our farewells. Folks, this is the brilliant Kieran Halpin and there's life in the old dog still. There may be things you'd like to do When I turn round and look at you Maybe something after all left in your quill There may be mountains left to climb But there is never enough time But there's life in the old dog still That's your bit but there's life in the old dog still There may be things we never said Some things hidden in your head 
There may be nothing left to see over the hill There may be money going south No truth left in your mouth But there's light in the old dog still I can't hear you But there's light There were times I thought long past When every breath could be your last I had no reason to believe I had the skill Night must follow day And sadness has its say But there's light in the old dog still but even night must follow day Even sadness has its say But there's light in the old dog still There may be things we never said Some things hidden in your head There may be things I never wrote down in my will there may be mountains left to climb But there is never enough time But there's life in the old dog still There was a time I thought long past When every breath could be your last I had no reason to believe I had the will but even night must follow day Sadness has its way But there's life in the old dog still And again But even night must follow day Even sadness has its say But there's life in the old dog still One more but even, even, but there's a life in the old dog still. Thank you. But there's life in the old dog still. You're some dog for one dog. I tell you that, Kieran Halpin. <laughs> Absolutely. Lots of people saying, Fergus says, life and lots of it, hopefully, indeed. Absolutely. Sure is. Uh, lots of great, beautiful comments from everybody from all over the world. Um, thank you, John. Thank you, Fergus. John John Wood. Hello. Nice to see you. John's in from Oslo as well. He had a, had a great chat with Kieran when he played the Skagen Festival a few years back. John's a great, yeah. great supporter of, of music and a great musician himself. Lovely to lovely to see you, John, tuned in from Oslo. Great to see everybody tuned in from everywhere. Um, I want to thank you very, very much for your time today and tonight um, for, John, for, for, the, for the chat here, Kieran. Um, much appreciated. You're an inspiration to me and all to many other singer-songwriters from everywhere. You have a great following around the world and uh, I'm very uh, delighted that you could be here on the, on the channel. Dai, it's been very much my pleasure. Thank you. And it's nice to see you again. And hopefully we'll um, we'll meet up in Ghent sometime and perhaps, um, well, perhaps get up to no good. We will. We, 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 can, we, have, we have done that in the past or in Germany even. Uh, who knows where our paths will cross, but they'll cross. Um, take care of yourself. Stay safe during these, these uh, weird times. Keep writing those great songs. And... Uh, we shall see each other down the road. This will be uh, all edited up. All my little four paws will be out of it. And uh, your friends and fans can share this whenever they want around the web. I hope they will. And uh, thanks, Great everybody, stuff. for tuning tuning in and uh, uh, for for your lovely comments. You have new fans, you have old fans. Everyone is wishing you well. Um, Chris made, made my day. So many great comments. I can't get through them all here. It's very fast. A lot of live watchers. It's brilliant to see you all. Thanks for the talk and the music. Great man, Kieran. Indeed, uh, Bernd. Indeed. 
Kieran, mind yourself, tug a buggy, and uh, Take we'll care. see you soon, all right? Yeah, all the best. Hey, our folks, the inimitable, the wonderful Kieran Halpin, one of Ireland's national treasures, uh, 21 albums, three songbooks. You know, what, what can you say? Just uh, uh, an, uh, an absolute gentleman to boot. Uh, love him as a person, love him as a songwriter. And I know, uh, you. yeah, we have new fans tonight after the broad, broadcast. A lot of old fans tuned in. Great to see you all. Look after yourselves out there. Stay safe, stay well. This has been episode 25 of Raving with Rua, and I'll see you next time.